will bless the Lord at all times, for his praises will continually be in our mouths. Thank you for joining in our parking lot service from Radio 89.9 on your FM dial or, or, or our live stream, stream and virtual Zoom praise and worship experience of the Friendship Baptist Church of Hopewell, Virginia, where we love God, love others, and serve our community. Today, we celebrate Mother's Day in this yeah. worship experience. Yeah. Thank you. Our guest preacher for this Mother's Day celebration is Minister Angela Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. One of our ministers of congressional care who is pursuing her Master's of Pastoral Studies at the Tabernacle Divinity School of Hopewell, Virginia. Yeah. Thank you, mothers and mother figures, for you light up our lives. Thank you. Mothers we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near. Still loved, still miss our lights throughout the year. Let's keep ourselves healthy and safe through the wearing a mask, social distancing, getting our vaccines, and helping each other through loving acts of kindness. Our call to worship declares, we gather together to worship our loving, nurturing God, who, like a mother, knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go, and comforts us in time of need. Join us in your, pop, in your posture of prayer as we open today's service with our invocational prayer. Lord, on this day, set aside to honor and remember mothers. We give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 The mothers of our music ministry will lead us in our opening praise. We do not own the rights to the music used in this worship experience, but it is ministered for your joy and blessing.
President Jacqueline Tunstall will lead us in our morning prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Bless us, God, and keep us in the center of your will and in the power of your hand. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Heal the mind, heal the soul, and heal our body. In the name of Jesus, bring peace, bring comfort to all those going through financial loss, emotional loss, and the loss of a loved one. Let your angels cover them and comfort their souls. Meet their needs as only you can. Heavenly Father, we thank you for creating mothers. We are an extension of you. We know that a woman was chosen to give birth to your only son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you bless and honor all the women in our lives who raised us, supported us, guided us, and shaped us. Thank you, Laura, for placing mothers who encourage us to love you and to love others. We thank you for the ones who show encouragement, compassion, and kindness. Thank you for the ones who inspired us to become who God you. made us to be. Thank you. Thank you for the ones who were placed in our lives who encourage us to see God in heaven. May our hearts overflow in gratitude to you who formed and knitted each of us in a woman's womb. Lord, a mother is our first friend. She's our best friend. And she's our friend for us.
She is not marked by arrogant or impolite talk, but speaks directly and morally. Her teaching of wisdom and law are tempered or calmed with mercy. Her speech conveys her wisdom and kindness. Her words build up and do not tear down. When she speaks, it is to help. And her wisdom provides instructions or leaves a positive influence. As teacher of her family, she must instruct and direct. And she performs this duty with gracious kindness and ready compassion. She opens her mouth mindfully and properly and in accordance with the law. She is discreet and obliging. Every word she speaks shows how she governs herself by the rules of wisdom. Love and kindness are written in her heart and shows itself on her tongue. A motherly figure will light up your life. But the trouble comes when one does not receive these tender talks or when we decide not to follow the wisdom that is given. Rebellion or refusal to take heed of these wisdom-filled conversations can lead us to make unwise decisions, wrong choices, and deal with undue pressure and stress. Yes, we get entrenched in our own struggles and our judgments cloud or darken our way. We become distracted by our own thoughts and feelings. Now, a mother figure or figure or mother dispels wisdom, but it's up to us to take heed. Oh, how I remember some of the biggest negotiations with my mother. And yes, I said negotiations, because there are times when we try to negotiate our way into something or out of something. She was adamant about church attendance when certain services were held, and how church became came before any other activity if she deemed it necessary. She also thought it not important to only just attend church, but to be active in the church. I later came to understand her rationale of the wise conversations. If we learn the importance of attending church, we will soon learn the importance of serving in the church. Amen. I recall distinctly one incident in particular, and I'm sure if my friends were here or if they're listening, they could attest to this as well, because we have talked about it many times. We used to have dances on Friday nights at Carnegie Wilson School, <laughs> and that's all we were talking about during the week. Amen. And on this particular Friday, it seemed like everyone was attending and we were all looking forward to going to the dance. However, there was a Friday night revival <laughs> and the dance started around the same time as revival here at Friendship. I bet you can already figure out where I was or where many of us were because I believe the majority of the parents attended Friendship and was of the same mindset. Now I'm not going to say we were not sitting in the back watching the clock, or making plans on the back pews, and rushing the revival service. But what I am going to say is that we attended that revival service before going to the dance. And I see my sister Sophia in the audience, she can attest to Mother Barbara, who can attest that they made sure we were at the church. But as sad as it may seem, some of these discussions these days are harder than they've ever had to be. Now we have conversations with our children, and in particular our sons, that is bringing light into the times that we are living in. Yes, yes. Knowledge shared strictly on how to protect themselves from police brutality or even death. Yes. Even still, I'm sure we can all attest that there are terrific gains from all of these loving discussions from our nurturers. But the Bible gives us some great examples and encouragement on how if we just understand and accept these words of wisdom, they will provide light in our life. Yes, yes, yes. Timothy. Timothy was a great was greatly influenced by the affectionate talks he had with his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. 
Without them, he may not have been acquainted with the scriptures. Amen. Nor would his faith have been so strong. Amen. You see, this is an, ex is an example where it was the, both the mother and the brother, grandmother. Mm -hmm. We can believe that a tree is known by the fruit it bears. Yeah. We can only imagine the loving talks Mary, the mother of Mark, had with her son, but with all of those, not only with her son, but with all those she welcomed into her home, talks about the love for service to Christ. Her talks and acts of love were so impactful that her son Mark decided to accompany Barnabas on two missionary journeys, okay. and the same love caused Peter to come to her home after his miraculous escape. He knew that this was the very place where the body of believers had gathered to pray for him and for his release. Peter had a peculiar affection for Mary's home. It was something about Mary's home. It was a godly home. So mothers, even when we are entertaining in our homes, we must be mindful that someone may just be gleaning from the love, the company, the entertainment, and the conversations. Amen. Even Naomi, she spoke wisdom from the heart on her account with Ruth and Orpah, her daughter-in-laws. Talks that were so influential that they led Ruth to find her a husband, Amen. Boaz, and Orpah to return into her family. Yeah. Had Ruth and Orpah not accepted the wisdom of Naomi, these ladies may not have been believers in themselves Amen. during a time when others were so doubtful. Yes. So sometimes the wisdom comes from outside the immediate home. Yes. Then we have the Canaanite woman who had a demon-possessed daughter who had a little talk with Jesus. Yes. She poured out her heart to Jesus as any mother would do with a sick child. And because, and because of this very talk, it was because that Jesus heals her daughter. Yeah. See, sometimes our kind-hearted talks are not always directed to those we oversee or interact with. Yeah. Sometimes we must just have a little talk with Jesus, yeah. a motherly talk with the Master on behalf of our children. Yeah. One thing for certain is that when we talk to the Master, that's one we don't have to worry about ignoring us acknowledge the value of all these influential talks at this time, but exchange, but each exchange means that a light is to be lit. Yeah. Yeah. The good news this morning yeah. is that when a motherly figure speaks, what she speaks is Christ. Yeah. Her tongue is a book by which we might learn many good things. Yeah. A motherly chat is always the light of Christ that gives wisdom. When I look back, I see how the instructions from my mother has paid off. We learned what it meant to put Christ first. Yeah. We did not understand it then, but I believe we were being taught in a delicate manner yeah. to seek him first come on, come on. and to look towards the light. Yeah. When I was growing up, we also had some mothers in the neighborhood that would, sit, that would deposit wisdom as well as instructions from time to time. They would also make sure that by the time we got home, yes. our parents were brought to the light as well. Yes. <laughs> we seem to have gotten away from the mentality of allowing our elders to reprimand or deposit wisdom. Yes. I'm forever yes. grateful that they took time to steer us in the right direction, Amen. directing us towards a brighter light. Yes. yes, parenting comes with challenges, but whatever challenges parenting presents, God promises we are overcomers. Yes. Yes. There will always be worldly philosophies and pressures that attempt to distract us from listening to the talks. But I thank God He has given us all that we need, yes. mothers and motherly figures that press beyond these distractions and continue to let the light of Jesus shine. He blesses all who looks to Him the light. Yes. So many events in our lives can leave us lightless and in the dark. Yes. But Jesus has come, for he said, I am the light of the world. Yes. He's, he's, his light, he's light even when we lose the light of a mother or mother and figure. Yes. I'm so glad that when my days are dark and my nights are even darker, that I have a light. Yes. Jesus, the light of the world. Yes. A light 
that will not go dim, nor a light that must be replaced. He is an everlasting God. It's a common fact that we replace a light bulb when it no longer works. And, how, and there are so many different light bulbs to choose from. A LED, iridescent, incandescent, how it's just a yeah. little thing. But when to change a bulb is still determined by the number of hours we burn the light each day. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. The number of hours we burn the light yes. each day yes. determines how often we should or need to exchange it. Mm. Then we discard the bulb because it no longer serves its purpose to illuminate. Mm -hmm. We should be glad that the light oh, of the Lord burns continuously. A light that doesn't have to be replaced. A light that burns countless hours for countless days for eternity. A God that has promised that our light of life is no longer able to illuminate on this side. We don't get to start. We get exchanged. We get exchanged for an eternal light. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning for an everlasting light. One that illuminates even when we can't flip the switch or can't flip the switch. One that illuminates when we're not even aware of the illumination or that we need some light. One that lights our light and no payment is required. He's already paid the cost. One that lights every day, every hour. The light has been an illumination for me when I've seen some dark and trying days. He's been a light for me when I didn't always do what I was supposed to do. He's been a light each and every time I couldn't see my way. He's been a light when I was on a dark path. He's been a light when family nor friends could break my day. He is our light. By now you should know that when we see, can't see our way, all we have to do is look towards Jesus, yeah. the light. Yeah. He'll light up our life yeah. and our past. Yeah. When we're feeling yeah. sad and in a dark place, yeah. look to Jesus. Yeah. When the stress of unfair treatment yeah. obscures our vision, yeah. look to Jesus. Yeah. When our money is low, Come look on. to Jesus. Yeah. When we get the doctor's report, look to Jesus. Yeah. When our children don't make the best decisions, look to Jesus. When the news dims our days, Look to Jesus. Yeah. Look to Jesus, yeah. the eternal light yeah. that will light up our life. Yeah. Let's thank God today yeah. for sending us mothers to be a light yeah. and thank Him for being a be light. Thank you. 